to the channel y'all another outdoor adventure today we're actually not going deer hunting it's not our true season for deer so we can't but i am so jacked for fall hunting right now we've had a slight cold front and when i mean slight it's 95 instead of 105 but when you wake up in the morning and it's like 72 instead of 85 you walk out you got your coffee and you can see the steam coming off your coffee a little bit and you just feel the little crispness in the air coming out of the north. I gotta shoot my bow, I gotta do something involved with hunting and that's that's where I'm at right now. There's something I've been wanting to accomplish for four years and it is get a public land pig with my bow. And I, every year I apply for this permit uh, that's close to my house, I can, it's literally walking distance. And I have tried and tried. You guys have probably seen some of the videos. I have not been able to get it done. Because when the water's at normal pool, they're just all up in the, the brush and the trees. And when you're kind of stalking and you're crunching on leaves and stuff, you'll scare them or they'll smell you before you can get close enough. But we have a special situation going on right now. And yes, this is a two fletch. If you guys are wondering, what's wrong with this? That's a two fletch flies just fine. The lakes are just so low right now that in the area I'm wanting to hunt, it's a beach. And I literally go down here and I fish sometimes. I've got catfish in these areas. It's a it's a sandy beach right now. And the woods are extremely dry and the ground is very hard. So for pigs and deer as well and other animals, they got to go down to that beach right now because that's where the vegetation is. That's where things are actually growing. There's moisture in the ground. So it's sort of a rare opportunity that I haven't seen since I've lived here and tried to hunt that I could literally go down there and get a pig on the beach. And that's exactly what we are going to try to do, ladies and gentlemen. So we have three or four days of good, cool weather. And I'm thinking that in the, in the mornings especially, we'll probably have some opportunities uh, at, a, at a pig. We'll probably see some whitetail all down on this beach area. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get up early in the morning, we're gonna go just scout, and we're gonna set up camera and see if we can get any confirmed sightings of pigs on the beach and then get a game plan from there. see this but I'm gonna try to show you Scouting report was good. We got visual confirmation there's pigs down there. I, I didn't even get down there to the lake that early and I was walking around and I I got a visual and we were able to, uh, to set up that camera. Now we'll know if pigs are going to come in this evening. We're getting geared up for tomorrow morning to go hunt. So this is what I'm going to be taking. You guys have seen this bow before but I built, I built this for low light hunting. This is my Bowtech CP28. It's a compact bow. Uh, it's got a 
really extreme let off. It's it's uh, super easy to hold back. But the way I set this up was for hunting in like ground blinds when it's dark, hunting pigs at night on, on the lease. You know, I've got a, a, a light on here. Uh, the other things that make it good for low light is it has a light on the site itself. If you guys can see that lighting up, that's lit up right now. Um, so if you're in the dark or you're in that, you know, just after sunset or right before uh, sunrise, you've got that and there's, there's no peep on it. I shoot both eyes open so I can just see, I can, I, I want to be able to see the best that I can. Um, and that's why I shoot most of my bows now. It's just both eyes open, single pin. So less clutter. It's as wide open as possible. Arrows, we're shooting a top-notch arrow, guys. We got a Victory Vat TKO. Uh, this is the Expert Series. It's supposedly tuned for the spine. Uh, and for fletchings, we got feathers. We got three little three-inch uh, turkey feathers on there. And the arrows I'm going to be hunting with, I have a lighted knock. So we'll be able to see when our arrow is flying. Might as well mention the broadhead since we're talking about the bows and arrows and everything else. So I'm just switching everything to these this year. That's the iron wheels. They're just good. They're just super high quality. You know, the big debate on mechanicals versus fix, it's, it's whatever. Shoot whatever you like. But what I like, I like really high quality steel knives. That's what these guys use. And I like to resharpen my stuff anyway. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty decent at that because I sharpen all my own knives and cutting tools so I can just shoot those into rocks it's great quality steel I could resharpen it and you know I can have broadheads for a couple of years just get the ones that I like have them for a couple of years so 125s with the bleeders on them standard cut um, that's what I'm using on my tips <laughs> That's a good workout. Unsuccessful, but a good workout. I shouldn't say unsuccessful, actually. We found some hogs, and we, ch we chased them. It was a pursuit, but chasing anything down with a bow usually doesn't work out successfully. I did have 
one micro opportunity, 40 yards. It was a hog that I hadn't had eyes on. I was chasing the other ones, and another one kind of just popped out, and it was about 40 yards, but it didn't give me a, enough time to draw back. But they bedded down in the nastiest, thick stuff, I'm assuming. Uh, I tried to walk up to it to see if I could even see in there, and it was complete veg out, like a wall. I would be on top of hogs in there. I don't feel comfortable being that much cover. Sparse cover? Sure. You know, kind of thick? All right. We'll get up in there and mix them up, but that really thick stuff, it's so difficult. You know, no bait, no nothing. Like, you're just going out there trying to either catch them in a good spot where they're sitting still, they're feeding on something, or you're stalking them, which right now everything is so crunchy, it's dang near impossible. I think I have a pretty rare window right now uh, to get this done, so let's look at this from a strategic standpoint. So we have our lake right here, Got a little cove, and then we have a bank that goes down this little creek is where I'm coming in at now when I first scouted the pigs I saw them right here they're right here on this point they're feeding on some little grasses and everything but when I stalked in this morning I waited here there was no pig showing up here so when I walked out here and I glassed I saw them all the way down here and then I chased them now our wind today that's actually coming out of the northeast so northeast on this map would be this direction instead of coming in and, and setting up right here I come down here and I just sit I pop a squat right here and I'll be able to see pigs coming around from this bend if they're coming out. If they come out right here, uh, I might be able to sneak around and get a shot, just depending. There's some cover in between here. There's also a lot of cover right here on the shoreline. So all these pigs are on the beach essentially, but there's tons of brush. The nice thing about sitting up here is I can scan down and if I see pigs all the way down wallering in the, in the lake, I could make a big run, kind of get around on them and set up in that brush with the wind right and then get a, get a shot. That's, that's my master plan right now. Basically the next time we get some decent rain, all these pigs are just gonna disperse into the woods. And so this little pattern that has been going on is uh, it will no longer be. I may end up just going into the brush and getting into the danger zone with them, but I really don't want to. I want to get one on the beach. I think that is so cool to be able to say I got a public land hog on the beach. All right, game plan for tonight. I think we may ditch the full pack. I may take it down there because it's got supplies in it, you know, for getting a pig out. I'm going to take my athletic hiking shoes and they're basically like trail running shoes and get ready to go. I don't even think I'm going to carry my big camera. Sorry. I'm just trying to get her done. And that means cutting weight and being super mobile. I think my chances are getting lower every time I go out. Uh, number one, the weather. It's just getting hotter. Uh, the best cold front was, the coolest morning was the scouting day. And also, they're starting to get educated. You gotta keep that in the back of the mind, but it's not gonna stop us.
not sure if that's legal.
bloody. Clean pass through. Just don't see any blood. Can barely see right now. There's a big squealing over here. Finally made it back to my pack, guys. 500 yards. I sprinted to go get the pig. And I shot, and I didn't have a headlamp. I couldn't see blood. I don't feel great about the shot. But I haven't had a chance to really look at the blood yet, so I'm gonna take the arrow off. But really examine the blood. It's a white feather, and it's got blood on it, but it's not like, that's kind of blown out. I'm gonna turn this around. Just not in love with the blood. We're gonna have to go back and look for blood on the ground, heading into the woods. And if we don't see anything, I'm gonna go back in the, in the daylight and look and maybe hunt some more because that pig was sitting there like squealing for 15 minutes after I shot it. It was just sitting in there. So there's a chance it could go down, but if it's squealing, those lungs, they're not full of blood. So. I've never shaken so much, like bow hunting, bow hunting. I could be bow hunting for a squirrel, and I don't know. It's just a different level of adrenaline, guys. <sighs> different level of adrenaline. So, I love it. It's ups and downs. Hopefully we find this pig, but if not, this was a huge, huge, I've been waiting to get a shot at a pig for years out here on public land, so. All right, boys, so I have uh, rethink this whole, let's go search for the pigs that are wounded in the heavy brush at night situation. As I was starting to go, I was like, you know what? I am just gonna let that pig hopefully sleep on it and literally go to sleep. I don't think it's worth me going in there and bumping the pig. There's a fear factor. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm not scared because I was scared. I literally had to dodge a pig already at my feet. Let's talk about the shot because I'm sure the footage was super grainy. There was a little grass patch that was about 40 yards that I was hoping they would go to and the little piglets kept staying in the water and they were like 45. I knew that was going to be a harder shot, smaller target. So I waited for the bigger ones to come a little closer and they were sitting there wallering. And at a second, for a second at 55 yards, I was like, maybe I'll just take a shot with it in the wallow. But then I started thinking, well, the vitals might get kind of weird. It's a, it's a smaller target laying on its side. So I was like, I'll wait for it to stand back up. And I, I waited. They, they stood back up, they started walking towards me, and once one hit 40 yards, I was like, okay, this is it. I don't know if they're going to come any closer. If the piglets get too far around me, they might get me, they might see me, because I had a perfect little brush situation. You know, I, I settled into position, good, sat down my anchor on my nose, and... Honestly, the sharp shot broke, great. I still have my pin set for 40 yards, or 39. I set it for 39 because I 
I said I don't want to. I don't want to shoot high, and I think I just. I don't know. What do you got on this? Do you think this is a good hit? On the arrow, it's obviously hard to see because it's black arrow. But this is why I went with uh, white feathers, so you would be able to see blood. It looks like dark stuff on the shaft of the arrow. Uh, and the front of the arrow dove into the sand. So there's there's absolutely no um, there's no blood on the broadhead itself. I'm sure it all got uh, dusted off as soon as it hit the sand. So it went into the sand probably this far. Yeah, that's where the blood starts. <sighs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, I'm wa I'm watching this back for the first time. I can't even get an arrow on. That's how much. Look at this. I'm shaking. My adrenaline is going so hard. I'm trying. I was about to shoot this pick right here, and then this one comes. I wasn't even fully drawn. I just like literally shot from like my chest. I missed a pig at one yard. I don't think it matters how many hunts I go on. I am shaking when I am bow hunting that like the adrenaline the adrenaline is so high there's nothing there's no other outdoor activity that compares I will I, I will do this to the to I can't do it anymore in my life the shot watching it back was not as bad as I thought as far as height wise we will go back to the same spot in the morning look for blood uh, and there might be another group of pigs there I don't know so We'll definitely take the bow and uh, see if we can find any blood or find another pig to take a stab at. Well, good morning, y'all. Hell of a way to start off the day with a little pig stalking. I got even closer this morning I got 35 yards away, but I had a tree in front of me I needed to stand up to shoot, and I knew it was probably going to see me if I stood up. So I waited for it to come out, but it just kind of meandered back into the brush. It might have smelled me, but I don't know, I think I'm definitely going to be back to try to get that pig. It's, it's, it's one that I saw that I already filmed in this video. Okay, over there is my tree, my little bush that I shot from. There's hog tracks and turds all over this beach. I laid a little stick out over here where my shot was. Ah, just look at the ground, guys. It's just tracks. So here's where the arrow landed. I see blood right here. I do see blood. Oh, I've walked it and walked it and walked it. That's definitely not good blood. I mean, it's on a beach, for goodness sakes. So, it should be easy to see. But right here, it's kind of dark. There's still moisture on the sand. God, I just looked at the sun and it messed up my eye. It looks like I'm looking at blood everywhere right now. All right, we're gonna take in a morning sunrise. Breathe in some fresh air. Get to hunting. You guys see that? It, it ain't much. I see heavy tracks right here. This is from the other pig that was standing behind this one. And you can see it's it spun around and then darted. It darted off, kind of did a circle, and then it stood in front of me at like 25 yards. Which, that's, by the way, a big lesson. I, I guess I don't practice it. It's just a thing that I'm trying to take mental note of. But when you take a shot, knock another arrow, 
just go ahead practicing knocking another arrow immediately because it's happened to me on a big elk hunt it's happened to me on deer hunts where if you miss or you you hit the animal and it's not great you might get a second opportunity or like last night the pigs kind of just running around in circles not knowing what's going on i had another opportunity i was shaking so bad i couldn't even knock an arrow but you know don't just think it's over as soon as you fire that first arrow. There's sometimes a lot more action that happens after that first one. Okay, I just picked it up right here on the tracks. So I found the second set of tracks that are running. And then there's the, there's the little trickle. It ain't much. But let's see if we can follow these heavy tracks and then maybe get on some smeared blood on branches or something like that. So yeah, there we go. There is some leakage. There's a little micro drop on that leaf. All right, let me walk you through the tracking process so far. So I've taken about 10 minutes. Might even be longer than that, 20 minutes. And I've literally traced the blood back to the shot. Basically, I'm just taking some sticks and I'm making a visual path. So my eyes will sort of recognize the next most likely move that the animal's gonna make. And I'm trying to get a trail into the woods. That's where I marked last night with the stick with the arrow impact. And then we have, we have the blood coming out both sides, which can be tricky. And I've started marking the stick with sticks the blood that I found in the sand. Keep going. It's spurting out. There's a hog turd. Probably came out of that guy. And then we can see uh, some of the heavy tracks. Heavy tracks starting to turn right there. See? Digging in, turning, following the sticks. There's good blood on the sand right here, following the sticks. This is where I got turned around because I found blood on little vegetation over here, a little bit right here. Uh, so I started putting little sticks on everywhere I've seen blood and it gave me a little pathway. Then I realized, okay, yeah, it's, it's going out both sides. And then I looked up and this is what I was hoping to see is, uh, I was hoping to see some blood on some some trees and some vegetation leading into the brush so that's where we're at and we're going in now now we got a lot of vegetation we can look at and see usually the blood on the shoulders will kind of smear off on the sides yep there's some right here now where i thought i heard the pig was run this way thought i heard it squealing but I mean, there's tons of little tunnels in here, so we're gonna try to find the tunnel this pig chose and just follow it. I don't even have my bow right now. I've got a machete to cut through this stuff, and I got a, I got a knife. All right, give me a sign, give me a sign. There's blood on the leaf right there. That's actually pretty high. You know, that's above my kneecap. There's really good blood right there. That's good dark red stuff. We might have nicked something, guys. We might have nicked something. Ooh, here's more. There's more bugs. Looks like this thing is maybe diving into this brush. Yep, there's some more right there. It's good blood. It's good blood. Might have a chance here. I gotta really stop and think for a second before I disturb all this. Okay, there's some right here. There's blood all over these leaves. Good blood here. Blood. We are 
in here with them, boys. Blood on that tree. Looks like more right there. Yep. There's some. This pit could be down. Could be down in here. Smell them, by the way. Ugh. There's more blood. I can smell the pigs. Holy, here it is, right here. Oh my God, it's already been disemboweled by coyotes. It was the shot was a little high, but we still, we still got her done. Well, guys, I went ahead and uh, finished up the the job of the coyotes forgot to do uh, they actually ate some of the organs and some of the loins down here and, and left the rest one of the shoulders may still be okay you know I'll look at it the, the, the temperatures last night for we're in the heat of summer so it's it's not great we'll drag it out and get a photo maybe take a look at that shoulder see if there's anything left on it that we can take off All right, guys, I had to bring the pig out to the beach. You know, it was probably 50 yards or so in there. Oh man, I'm getting sand all over my bow here. But, you know, unfortunately the coyotes had got to the pig before I did. I still think it was probably smart for me not to go in there last night, just given how thick it was, how nasty it was, and if the pig was wounded. That would have been dumb, uh, me being out here by myself with potentially getting wounded and having a long hike home. Oh, man, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is a trophy for me, 100%, uh, to get my first public land. This is my first public land animal. The amazing thing about this hunt, guys, is I, I kind of thought it was over. Hunting is, is a roller coaster, and I thought this hunt was over uh, this morning when I came in here and I saw the thin blood. And I was thinking, man, it doesn't look like a true double lung shot or a hard shot. The blood's kind of thin. Uh, but when I got into that vegetation, then I could really see good dark blood and that gave me hope. And then it wasn't much farther, you know, 25 yards from there that I, I found the pig. And that is going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you for tuning in. You know, hunting season is, is coming right around the corner. Pigs like this, obviously you can hunt them year round. They're invasive but this is a good way to just kind of get primed uh, for deer archery season and uh, get a little confidence going into it. So thank y'all for being here on this crazy hunt with me and stay tuned for more this fall. And I'll catch you on the next adventure. We're able to salvage one of the quarters. The other one was really swollen. Nasty. All right, we're gonna make sure we cook that one really good. Stay tuned for that.